best way to make cooking easier and less stressful on Christmas Day is to get organised and prepare as much as possible in advance, leaving you more time to spend with your family. Making a stunning pork, apricot and pistachio stuffing the day before is a great way to get ahead. It's easy to do, looks a million dollars and tastes absolutely delicious. Christmas dinner for me is not about food piled high on a plate. Less is more. I'd rather have five or six things on a plate that taste absolutely delicious than ten items tasting average. Stuffing, for instance. I'd much rather put a lot more effort into the stuffing and enjoy it, but eat a lot less of it. First, add pork mince to the bowl, season with salt and pepper, and mix. Take your grater and a braver and apple. Just get the grater and grate the apple in there. Usually stuffing is cooked in the turkey, but I'm doing mine separately so I can make it in advance and get the flavour and presentation spot on. Now, the nice thing about the apple, it goes brilliantly well with the pork. It makes it a little bit sweeter. It also makes it a lot lighter as well, which is really important. Next, add a handful of chopped apricots, which gives the stuffing another fruity note and a lovely texture. The apple disintegrates, but the apricots stay really nice and intact. Nice little bite. Then chop a handful of pistachio nuts. Again, I'm thinking of the build-up of textures, flavour, and also colour. Pistachio is in. Now, give that a really good mix. Grate in some lemon zest. The zest is packed full of intensely flavoured essential oils, which gives the stuffing a vibrant citrus zing. And for freshness, add a handful of coarsely chopped parsley. The balance of flavours is nice and delicate, and it sits beautifully with the turkey. Now, sage and pork and apple, that's the perfect marriage. Now I'm going to think about the presentation skills. Tim Fall. A little drizzle of olive oil. And then we get a really nice fragrant sage leaves. The sage leaves are used to wrap the stuffing. Start by overlapping them. It's almost like rolling a cigar, but we're going to roll it in sage leaves. Taste is paramount, but presentation is really important too. So it's worth spending a few extra minutes to get this right, because it will make the final dish look amazing. Now, a little season across the top. And then take your sausage meat. And all I want to do now is put half of it onto the plate. Run your finger along the stuffing. This is where it takes on a completely different flavour again. I need some spice in there. I want a little bit of heat in the stuffing so it's exciting to eat. Mergays. Mergays are traditional North African sausages made from beef or lamb. And all I'm going to do now is take the sausage and lay that in the middle. They're flavoured with harissa, a fiery chilli paste which gives them their heat and distinctive colour. It really does give that nice sort of wake-up call inside the stuffing. If you can't get hold of mergays, other spicy sausages like shrizo would work well too. Take the rest of the stuffing and we'll sit that on top so it encases that mergays. Once you've got it like that, lift up the tinfoil very carefully, and roll that over. Let the tin do the work, roll it nice and tight. There. Fingers underneath. Just pull that back and double check. Lovely. Look at it, it's not even cooked yet and it looks delicious. The ultimate Christmas cracker, fantastic. That sage will cook and really perfume the sausage meat and you cut through to the centre, you've got that nice spicy sausage. Lovely. In. Now, roll it across, twist at the ends, and then from there, up into the hands, and you push it in, and twist and turn. And all that's doing is just making the perfect cylinder. 
useful. The stuffing can be made, wrapped and stored in the fridge a day or two in advance. That's the first part of my ultimate Christmas dinner ready. On Christmas Day, simply pop it into the oven and cook at 200 degrees for 40 minutes. Sauces are one of the important ways chefs add extra dimension and flavour to dishes. You can use this trick at home. My caramelised cranberry and apple sauce is another recipe I always cook a day in advance. It packs a wonderful punch that really lifts the subtle flavour of the turkey. It's simple to make and with its deep red vibrant colour looks fantastic on the plate. The secret behind any good Christmas is in the organisation and the preparation. Anything you can get done in advance, do it. Apple and cranberry sauce is a prime example. First things first, we're going to make a really nice caramel. Sugar in. Add 150 grams of caster sugar to a pan, followed by a couple of star anise. That helps to really give a nice sort of aniseed flavour to the cranberries. Next, lightly crush four cardamom pods. This adds a lovely warm, spicy, sweet flavour. Then wait for the sugar to melt and form a caramel. Really important to have the confidence now to colour that caramel so it gets really nice and dark before putting the cranberries in. Wow. The smell of that caramel is amazing. Now, cranberries in. Cranberries are very tart and acidic but balanced with the sweetness of the caramel and apples, they give the sauce a lovely dry, sharp note. To tell if they're fresh, drop them on a hard service. The higher they bounce, the fresher they are. The secret now is for the caramel to blister the cranberries and really start to break that down. It smells fantastic. Next, core, peel, and thinly slice two apples. And once the sauce is finished, it really does help to sort of wake up the flavor of the turkey. Now the cranberries are starting to break down. Apple in. Smells fantastic. A touch of salt and pepper. That's really important. Really helps to balance that tartness against the acidity of the apple. Salt and pepper really brings it back. The smell is fantastic. It's like a sort of sweet, sour, spicy, nice. Now from there, deglaze the pan with a touch of port. Round the side. Deglazing dissolves all the lovely sticky caramelised bits of food that are stuck to the pan and incorporates them into the sauce. Next, add the zest of an orange. And for another layer of fragrant sweetness, squeeze in the juice. Lovely. Then cook on a low heat for five to 10 minutes to thicken. But remember, the sauce will become even thicker once it's cooled down. Now, that is the right texture. I don't want a runny sauce. I want something really nice and thick, delicious, packed full of flavour. Perfect. If you really want to get ahead, this sauce can be made three or four days in advance and kept in the fridge, which allows the flavours to develop even more. Mm. Then on Christmas Day, simply bring it up to room temperature and serve. Another job done, leaving you more time to enjoy this very special day. Another golden rule at Christmas is, don't do all the work yourself, delegate. At home, I'm raising my own little brigade of sous chefs, who are always willing to help with any recipe that involves chocolate and the possibility of licking the mixing spoon. Another thing I always do the day before Christmas is knock up a batch of mint chocolate truffles. They're child's play to make and have a wonderful fresh mint flavor, the perfect after dinner chocolates. Right, Megan, Jack, I need some help. Yeah. yeah? Chocolate, mint, truffles. First things first, yeah? What I want you to do is get this block of dark chocolate and just break it up into small pieces. Okay, Meg, that's for you. Jack, that's for you. Mate, where did you get that tie from? Not <laughs> a tie! <laughs> very, very smart. Right, mint, chocolate, truffles. The secret here mm. is getting that mint flavour into the chocolate. So look. 
Best thing to do, get a little bunch of mint and just lightly bruise it. You can flavour the truffles with whatever takes your fancy. From fresh chilli, which gives it a surprisingly delicious kick, to orange zest, to a splash of brandy. Right, double cream and single cream in. The cream makes the truffles wonderfully soft, luscious and rich. Nice. Next, add a generous pour of honey, which helps to sweeten the dark chocolate. Now, bring that up to the boil. Now, the secret is we pour that on top of the chocolate. Okay, so we've literally got two minutes to get this done quick. That's why I need some help in half. Dad? Yes? Can't you beat this up with a rolling pin? That's a very good or, idea. Or would it be too small? No, it's a very good idea. Because what we can't afford to do is for the cream to reduce. If the cream reduces, then the consistency of the truffle becomes too hard. But it's a very good idea, Jack. You know that. Now, gently with that. I've got your boyfriend a present. No. Oh, yeah, just ask it. All right, just ask it. What's oh, he yeah, buying? She bought them a. Um... Them? <laughs> what? Your big sister's got more than one boyfriend. I haven't yeah. got one. Jack's got. Oh. Go on. Jack, what's her name? Emma. Emma. What have you bought Emma for Christmas? Don't tell Seriously, me. Seriously, Dad? Yeah, a table or two at Daddy's restaurant. Next, add 130 grams of softened butter to give the truffles a glorious richness and sheen. Break it up into small little bits. Yeah? Nice. Good. Once the cream and milk have come to the boil... Yeah? Mm. Really nice. I can really smell the mint. Strain over the broken chocolate. Oh. That oh. smells delicious. Push that mint flavour through there. So yeah, it really does come out. Juice. Yeah, so it really does come out. Give that a nice stir. Oh, look, I can see the oh. chocolate at the bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see how the chocolate's dissolving? And that honey has given it a really nice glaze. Sweetness as well, because it's bitter chocolate, that's right. Dark chocolate. And then the butter Whoa. starts to give the chocolate a really nice shine. So then what will actually happen if happen Jack. to... Matt. Mm. <laughs> that, look at that. Oh. Beautiful. Right, that. Do you want to lick the spoon? Put your tongue out. <laughs> 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 no, right. right. <laughs> then pour the chocolate into a container and chill in the fridge for about an hour to firm up. Jack, I don't want any fingers in there. Top shelf. <laughs> you can see. Let it go nice and firm. As the truffle mixture sets, prepare the coating. So I have one for the adults in cocoa powder, yeah? And one. With flakes. Yeah, no, surprise, surprise. So, wait, put your hands down. <laughs> put, your hands. put your hands down. So, look, you just go like that and twist the flake onto the plate. You can coat the truffles in anything you like. Finely chopped pistachios or almonds work really well with the mint. Or to give them a bit of crunch, plain brown sugar. Once the truffle mixture has set, it's time to roll out the chocolates. Mega. Dear, oh dear. Right, OK, I'm going to show you one first, yeah? So hands really nicely cold. Now, the secret is, in there. Wow, that's Watch. really gone hard. Manipulate it first like that, and then look. Roll, and then quickly, bang. Look, nothing on my hands. Shake off excess, and then just on. Beautiful. Now, in there. And let's go. Come on, Jack. Dear, hello. When you're ready. Huh? It'll be New Year's Eve by the time we get one done. Just try and, try and drop it on there rather than place it on there, mate. Okay. The nice thing about making them by hand, they're not all the exact same size, yeah? Handmade chocolate mint truffles. Jack, the secret is a truffle is a one bite wonder, not a golf ball. You have to hurry up because if the ganache starts melting, we're in trouble. I thought you said there wasn't going to be any chocolate on your hand. That's because you're slow. Show me your hands. Right, Jack, let me help you here. Yeah? Not so, not so big. Yeah. Round like that, like that. Yep. Yeah. And then like that, in, straight in. Oh, <laughs> I I wanted to do it. Then he slipped one bit into the cream. Try and put yours in cocoa powder this time. Look, put it in cocoa powder. <laughs> <laughs> right, stop, 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 stop. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, Jack, what I've said. Quick. Um, and whilst he's gone, let's turn these into proper little truffles, shall we? Let's cut them down. When the truffles are coated and the kids are cleaned up, decorate them with sprigs of mint. So it looks nice and... Christmassy. Yeah, Christmassy, that's right.
Would you like to try one? Oh, yes, yes please. please. Okay, which one should we go for? Flake or cocoa? Flake. Flake. Mmm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. You can really taste the mint. You can really taste the mint, can't you? Mm. Then prize the truffles away from the kids and pop in the fridge ready for Christmas Day. Another job done. <laughs> <laughs>